Welcome. Uh, in this tutorial, I'll try to explain the basic data structures and objects that you will be using from the Nigma's platform, the base platform upon which the supply chain management league is run, while developing your negotiation strategy. So that is the documentation of the Nigma's platform. I'll put a link to it in the description. Uh, I suggest that you should just read the overview and go through the tutorials. Um, but in this time, I just explain some of the base modules and the main negotiation uh, objects that you will be using. In Nigmas, we have four types of modules, base modules that implement basic data structures, negotiation mechanism, which, which has one module for each mechanism, because Nigma supports several negotiation mechanisms, and advanced negotiation has some more advanced stuff, we don't care about that now, and some helper modules. So, the most important modules for you are the base modules, outcomes and utilities. Outcomes define outcome spaces, so it defines the issue class. So everything is in every issue is represented by a single issue class, all types of issues. And there is a tutorial about how to use them. And also it exports some functionality that you may be using. Uh, for example, checking if what is the number of outcomes uh, of the current issue space or whether it is a continuous out, uh, issue space, things like that. Other than the outcomes module, there is a utilities module, which defines all types of utility functions. There are many types of utility functions. And it also supports exporting utility functions from Genius, but you'll not be using that in CML. Uh, it doesn't only define utility functions, but it defines some uh, very basic analytic tools like finding Pareto frontiers, no normalizing a utility function, finding an outcome with a specific utility value or a utility within a range given uh, a utility function, and this is optimized for the type of the utility function, so it is a very useful function, uh, or finding the utility range of a utility function. Uh, so these are the main functionalities that you will be interacting with. There is also a basic module called Genius, which implements uh, a genius negotiator class, as you can see here, is a genius negotiator that allows you to instantiate any uh, gen uh, any genius negotiation party uh, and use it in uh, your negotiations in CML. Uh, these are some examples like Atlas X uh, uh, Agent X, sorry, Atlas Three, uh, Parscat, uh, YX Agent, but there are others, and you can use actually any. Uh, negotiation party, but some of them throw exceptions, so we cannot guarantee that all of them are working. Uh, you can check the ones that are working from the Genius uh, Negotiator object by accessing the Negotiator's uh, property, which return a list of all available agents in Genius 8.4.0 that are actually working, uh, that we tested, and you can use them. Okay, So these are the main basic uh, modules that you will need to interact with but then you will mostly interact with the SAO package which implements a stacked alternative offers protocol and all uh, the negotiators and controllers related to it so as you can see it is a complicated package but I'll try to give you an idea about how this thing is structured and what are the options available to you okay so the base class of everything is what we call a named object. Named objects are, have names and IDs. Um, an important thing is, is to notice that the ID is system assigned. You, you do not have control over it. But the name is user assigned. You can use uh, the name for printing and for debugging purposes, but internally the system always uses the ID. So, if, for example, if you want to request a negotiation with another agent, this agent will have a name and an ID, but you must use the ID when you request a negotiation. You cannot use the name. Some named objects are also rational objects. And Negmas, what this means is that it exports a utility function. property, which you can read or set, 
and this utility function property uh, can be any callable, in fact, but is most likely one of the utility functions that are defined in the utilities module or any utility function you define yourself. So what are the things that can have utility functions? What are these rational objects? There are three types in English. Agent, controller, and negotiator. What you develop for the supply chain management rig is actually an agent. So you develop something that inherits from a CML 2020 agent. And here goes your agent. Okay. This agent can use uh, negotiators to actually enter negotiations. So from the Negotiator class, there is a type called SAO negotiator, which is simply a negotiator that can be used with the stat alternating offers protocol. Here, you can just use the SAO negotiator. There are many types that are defined, so there are many types already defined, or you can add your own. So if you have a specific negotiation strategy you want to implement in a single negotiation, you can implement it here. I'll speak a little bit more about SEO negotiators later. But now we go to the third type, which is the controller. Again, there is an SAO controller, which what you inherit from. And in the library, there are some types of SAO negotiators controllers, I'll explain all of the ones that are available in the library, but you can also add your own. So you can add your own controller. Okay. So that's the main structure. But why do we have these three types? Uh, to understand that, let's start by considering uh, uh, a factory in the SCML, this factory is represented by an agent. So it's represented by an agent object. And now this agent wants to, in, to negotiate with another agent, let's say one supplier. So we have one supplier here. It want, this, wants, this agent wants to negotiate on the right, wants to negotiate with the agent on the left. What it will do is that it will request a negotiation. So it will request negotiation from the wallet class through H, its AWI. That's what will happen. So each agent has an AWI that connected to the wallet. And this agent as well has an, another AWI that connected to the same wallet. That's why they can interact. So one of them can request a negotiation with the other one. Now, what will happen is that if the, the other agent accepts the negotiation, a mechanism will be, will be created. In our case, this mechanism would be an SAO mechanism, but that doesn't change anything in the picture. But agents do not interact with mechanisms directly. It, what interacts with mechanisms are negotiators. So you have a negotiator here, and you must have a negotiator here. And these negotiators are connected to the mechanism and exchanging messages with that to implement the negotiation protocol. So the basic thing is that an agent can directly create a negotiator and use it. In this case, a negotiator would need a utility function to interact with the mechanism. And this one would also need a utility function to interact with the mechanism. This is one uh, way to use the library, which is valid. But in this case, as you can see, you have to define a utility function for each specific negotiator. Now consider a buyer who have multiple sellers. There is seller one, seller two, and seller three. 
and it wants to interact to negotiate with the three at the same time. Moreover, it's negotiating with uh, supplier one and supplier two. So this buyer is actually in five negotiations at the same time. It needs some way to coordinate the behavior of its negotiators in all of these. And having an independent utility function for each one of them may not work. That's why controllers exist. Controllers allow multiple negotiators to be controlled through a central entity. So the picture now changes a little bit. So now you will have the agent, another agent, several agents here. And this agent wants to negotiate with all of them at the same time. One way to do that is to create a single controller and define the utility function for the controller itself. Then this controller will create three negotiators to actually negotiate with the with three negotiators from these three agents. That's too common in SML that we actually implemented some types of controller that uh, will help you implement this uh, pattern. Okay. We go back here to our package and let's look at the types of controller that we have. You can see there's an NSAO controller that is the base class for all controllers that support the stack alternating offers protocol. And now we have a random controller. We always have random something that just behaves randomly. We also have a sync controller, a random sync controller, a single agreement controller, single agreement random controller, single agreement aspiration controller, and a meta negotiator controller. I'll try to explain each one of these. Uh, so the first one is the SAO controller, which is the base class. So this functionality is av available for any controller. What are the methods available here? You can see you have a before join, which is called by each negotiator before they join a negotiation to ask for permission. So if you return false from here, the negotiator will not join the negotiation at all. And an after join, which will tell you that a negotiator that you control have entered a negotiation. It didn't start yet, just entered. Then you receive a call back on negotiation start and on negotiation end. The name is clear. And also you receive a call back to propose and to respond for each one of these negotiators. In both cases, you get the negotiator ID. And you can always access your list of negotiators by just saying self.negotiators. So that's the base class. Using that, you can implement your logic by just inheriting directly from uh, the AO controller. But there are some uh, patterns that happen a lot, so we implemented them in supporting classes that you can use. Let's look at the sync controller. So the sync controller is uh, a controller that controls multiple negotiations at the same time synchronously. What we mean by that is that rather than implementing a respond and a propose for each one of the negotiations independently, you just implement a single function, counter all, which receives all the offers with, with their states for all the negotiators and you counter them. You have to decide, you just implement this counter all function and decide what to do uh, given all of these offers. The problem, of course, is that if you have multiple sync controllers interacting in the system, loops can form, and when loops form, there will be a deadlock. The system will break this deadlock by forcing some controllers, as described here, to respond before they have all the offers. So I'm not really guaranteed to get all the offers every time in counter all, but you will get it most of the time, and the other few times, it, the reason is that the system is trying to break a loop, and you have to respond with partial information in this case. 
using Think Controller will remove many of the complexities of having to deal asynchronously with all of these negotiators that you are controlling uh, in different places. So you, you have to implement different respond and propose functions. Using Think Controller, you just need to implement one thing, counter all. The second important type of controller we implemented is a single agreement controller. So the single agreement controller, as you can see here, it is a sync controller. So you can see it is a sync controller, but as the name suggests, it only gets a single agreement. It tries to get no more than one agreement. Uh, the common case if, is if you are negotiating with multiple suppliers for something, but you need it to form only one of them. You don't need all of them. Um, and there is a parameter here when you initialize it, which called which is strict. If you set this to true, the controller is guaranteed to get no more than one agreement. It will never give you two agreements. But the probability that it will fail to get any agreements will increase. To use this type of controller, you don't really need to implement anything except few functions. One of them is, is acceptable. This function gives you an offer. The source is a negotiator that got this offer and this state, and you have to tell it either is this offer acceptable or not. The other one is is better, which compares two uh, offers for the same negotiator. Okay, and best outcome. You have to override this. Uh, by the way, everything they say you have to override, you will find that it's an abstract method. So you, you will not be able to create an object except if you override it. If something is not an abstract method, then there is a default implementation which is same. You can just use. Anyway, the best outcome tells you what is the best outcome of all the outcomes that are possible in one of the negotiations. And best offer returns the ID of the negotiator with the best offer, as explained here. So if you implement these four functions, the system, uh, the, the single agreement controller will take over and will make sure that you have a single agreement. As you see here, doesn't really need you to define a negotiation strategy because it's it has a built-in negotiation strategy that it uses. If you don't like it, you just inherit from it and you overload this negotiation strategy which is implemented as expected in counter all. Okay, so that's a single agreement controller. And there's a specific type of single agreement controller called the single agreement aspiration controller, which use a time-based strategy to get you a single agreement from a set of negotiations. If you use that, you don't need to implement anything. Another type of controller, which is the last one, is the meta-negotiator controller. The meta negotiator controller is a sync controller, but it is not a single agreement controller, which means it can get multiple agreements. But it uses what we call a meta negotiator. Uh, the simplest type of meta negotiator, which is a default, is again the aspiration negotiator, which implements a time based strategy, a ball where uh, by default. It uses the same negotiation strategy in all of the negotiations. It assumes that all of the negotiations have the same issue space, which is usually correct. Uh, for the SML case, uh, and it will get you uh, some of the offers based on the results of this aspiration negotiator. So it does not guarantee a single agreement, does not guarantee a single agreement, but it uses the same negotiation strategy of in all of the negotiations, assuming that they are all equivalent, and once it gets an, uh, enough agreements to to uh, satisfy its target, it will stop negotiating. So you can go into more details by reading the documentation of these types of controllers. just wanted to tell you what is there. That's about controllers. What about negotiators? There are several types of negotiators that are already implemented. As I said before, you can use any genius negotiator uh, by just uh, running Nigma's genius. But there are few built-in negotiators to Nigmas that are extremely simple. The one that's mostly used by built-in agents is called Aspiration Negotiator. We do not guarantee that in the final competition the built-in agents will be using that, so we don't 
uh, assume this. Maybe we will change that. But you can use it if you want. The aspiration negotiator implements uh, an optimized version of the time-based uh, negotiation strategy. You, you can use bullware, linear, consider, or change, or choose your, your own exponent if you want. Uh, and there are many parameters that control, for example, does it uh, pre-sort the outcome spaces that's very nice uh, very fast if you use the same utility function several times but it can be very slow for large outcome spaces you have to uh, read the documentation here to understand what each one of the parameters is doing but the default is usually same in Enigma so usually you can just use the default parameter settings if, if they exist uh, we have also a naive tit for tat negotiator that's a very simple implementation of tit for tat It works uh, like tit for tat against time-based strategies, but it's not very well tested against anything else. And it doesn't use an opponent model, so it is extremely simple. Uh, you, you can experiment with that if you want to use it, but most likely you will implement your own uh, negotiator. And if you didn't implement your own controller. So either you implement controllers and control multiple negotiations at once, or you implement negotiators and uh, have these negotiators uh, use utility functions that are coupled together. To implement a negotiator, you have to inherit from the SAO negotiator class, and you have to define only one method. There is one method that you must define, and this method is propose. So if you go there, propose, Given a mechanism state, propose an outcome. And that's it. So that's the uh, uh, proposal strategy, the offering strategy of your agent. That's the only thing you need to implement. So what about the acceptance strategy? There is uh, a default acceptance strategy, which is implemented by the, res the default respond function. You can override that if you want. But the default respond uh, function will simply call propose. And if propose returns some outcome with the utility less than or equal to the utility of the offer that we are receiving now, it will accept. Otherwise, it will reject. And that's it. That's what respond is doing. Uh, you can, of course, change that by overriding this respond function. And again, in the documentation, you will find full details about uh, each one uh, of these functions. And you can use it. Uh, to understand your, what, how to develop your agent and I highly recommend that you go through the overview um, and uh, the tutorials because they will explain a lot of this structure and they tell you how to develop a new negotiator, a new mechanism and all these kinds of things. Thank you.